Hey, it's Tim here. And in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to install PostgreSQL on the Mac. Now, if you've watched my previous video for how to do it on Windows and maybe you don't have a Windows machine, this is the video for you. Otherwise, if not, check out the Windows video and it's pretty much the same guide. Uh, the steps are very, very similar. We just have a few quirks for Mac that we have to take care of. So to do this, you just head to the download page. And what we're going to do once we're here, and I'm going to click that a couple of times to get there. Um, we're going to go to the Mac OS page, hit the download installer, and you'll get to this page. This is actually a page hosted by uh, enterprisedb.com. And the version I'm installing is 12.4. You'll see that I've actually downloaded it here already. If I just highlight this for you here at the bottom left hand side, um, you, see, you can see that I've already got the installer on my desktop just to make this video go a little bit faster. But if I go ahead and show where that is on my laptop, you can see that it's right there on my desktop. Once you've installed that file, you can go ahead and uh, close your browser and just double click the installer file that should now be on your desktop. I'm just gonna minimize this window. And when you do that, when you double click that window, you'll get this package um, sort of open up. And you just need to go ahead and click on this box to actually run the installer. Now what the installer does is it actually installs um, a few things. Install, it installs Postgres, but it also installs a another sort of plugin manager, which goes and gets specific add-ons for Postgres uh, for you. So we're gonna go ahead and open the application. It's gonna give us a warning because I've downloaded this from the net and Mac OS Catalina seems to think anything from the internet is um, not good for you. So um, let's just wait for that uh, installer to pop up. It should be uh, some sort of uh, square page here with the EDB on the left and Postgres on the right. Um, obviously this graphic might change, but once this is up, you'll get a setup window very similar to Windows actually. So go ahead and hit next. It's going to um, ask you for the install directory. Uh, leave this as default and unless you know what you're doing, just leave these defaults as they are. It's gonna install these four things. So you remember I mentioned that it's gonna install a package manager. One of those is called Stack Builder, which goes and gets specific uh, plugins and helps you build your sort of environment as well. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna go ahead and hit next. And so I'm gonna go ahead and hit next and you'll get another data directory. So these two are important. Where is it gonna install Postgres and where is it gonna install the data? So go ahead and hit next. Now you'll see here that I've already got a data directory in my computer. This is because I had a previous version of Postgres already installed. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna uh, change this. So let's just go ahead and uh, type in a two and I can go ahead and hit next. Actually, what I could do, if I'm just trying to be smart here, what I could do is actually go and see what we have here. So if I hit cancel and I just go to that directory, you might be able to fix this. If you've already installed Postgres in the past, you might have the same problem as me, where basically um, Postgres is, is the, the file that you need to be able to install is already there, but for whatever reason, uh, it's not actually able to overwrite it. So you need to go to the library folder here and you're looking for the folder called Postgres SQL. And then you've got here the different version and here you can see that it's actually got that folder. So if I just move that to the bin, uh, give it my password here and then go back and go back to the installer and just delete the two and then hit next, you'll see this actually progresses uh, quite well. Now. I'm thinking about that just for one second and I'm thinking, have I actually broken this installer? But maybe not, let's just go ahead and progress. I think we should be okay. If we have, I'll show you how to fix this as well. That's uh, another key step. The ports, just leave it as it is. Default locale. And so here we are, we've got the install directory, Postgres, yes, this is all right. Um, and the data directory is separate, yes, that's correct. So go ahead and hit uh, next. And then that just runs the installer. I think everything's gonna work fine. We managed to get through that error. Essentially the folder was already there, so I just went and deleted it. Um, it's a leftover from a previous install that I did for this demo. So uh, once this is done, uh, we'll hop back into the video and we'll carry on from there. Okay, it looks like the installer is pretty much done. It's on the last final few steps. Um, and when this finishes, we'll then get the option to install something called Stack Builder. We ticked the box earlier to enable this, but what Stack Builder does is it essentially, essentially helps you build your Postgres environment uh, based on a bunch of variables. 
Um, but in order to do that, you might want to install certain applications. So uh, let's go ahead and finish this. Uh, we've ticked the box for Stack Builder to launch. Let's go ahead and hit my password. And Stack Builder launches, and it's going to ask which version of Postgres you've got, which is version 12. It's the only option there. And this is essentially what Stack Builder does it allows you to add plugins or settings and configurations and drivers for your particular installation of Postgres. And in this case, I'd like to tick the PostGIS uh, plugin because this will allow this will allow us to do some spatial functions on our database. So go ahead and hit next. But the key thing here is I need to pay attention to where it's downloading this because I'm not actually going to let the installer finish this installation. On Catalina, it actually bugs out if you let it do this. So we're going to manually finish the installation, but we're going to let it download to this directory here in my user folder. So go ahead and hit next. I'm going to tick the box to skip the installation when this is done. Hit next. Um, it'll go ahead and get the file. And that's pretty much it from the first part of this installer. Um, Postgres is installed, but we need to go finish installing our little plugins that we've just requested. So go ahead and open your finder, head to the folder, and you'll see that this is the file that it downloaded for us. We just need to go ahead and unzip that. Now, I actually unzipped this earlier on today, so I've actually already got it in my downloads folder. But if I go ahead and double click this installer, you'll now see now this runs the correct a procedure because it asks for my username and password it actually runs this properly whereas before if you let the previous installer run it it actually errors out so again we're just waiting for the pop-up to, to appear you hit next and um, this is a much smaller uh, installation and it's asking for the password now for the actual database we've already got installed so I'll go ahead and give it that password hit next and that's pretty much it, actually. It's a very fast install in this particular case. I've got a, a decent laptop, so it's able to get through this fairly quickly. And now this is done. We've got a working database on our laptop that we can now play around with with Tableau or Tableau Prep. Now, when we finish this, you might then wonder, well, as a Mac user, how do I open up Postgres? How do I see that it's running? How do I know that it's working? Well, if you hit uh, command space, that brings up Spotlight, or in my case, Alfred, which I've used to re replace uh, Spotlight. And I'm just gonna type in Postgres, and you'll see that nothing comes up, okay? Nothing comes up here. And that's fundamentally because when you actually install Postgres, it doesn't, it doesn't appear as a traditional application. So what we need to do is actually go to the Applications folder, and in the Applications folder, we should find a directory titled Postgres, and there it is. It's this uh, folder right here. Now, if I double click that and open it, you'll see that I've got, you'll see that I've got several files. So don't, don't delete any of these because they're essentially put there by Postgres. If you want to uninstall uh, Postgres, don't just delete these. You actually need to go and delete another folder in the library section, which I'll maybe show you at the very end of the video. But to launch Postgres, just hit PG admin for, and what you can do is you can drag this onto your toolbar if you'd like to be able to access it. Or if you run it once, then you can just uh, right click on the icon, icon and keep it to keep it on the dock. Okay, now what it's done having launched Postgres is uh, two things. It's opened up the browser and it's not only done that, there's a little elephant icon here on the top right hand side. If you just look at where my mouse is getting large, just here, you can see that uh, there's an elephant icon and that means the Postgres server is running, but it needs our password again. So let's go ahead and enter that and hit enter. And that's that's it pretty much. We're in, it's working. And you can see this is our uh, traditional sort of uh, database setup here on the left-hand side. And uh, you'll find that I've, I've got no tables in there. So let's open up Tableau Prep and let's write a table to this uh, database. I'm just going to open up uh, Tableau Prep 2020.3. You actually do need the latest version of Tableau Prep in order to do this. So if you haven't got 2020.3 or if you're watching this in the future, uh, anything higher than that, then uh, you won't be able to follow along. But you can just sort of watch and see how I do this just to see that the Tate space is working. So I'm going to go ahead and close the uh, registration uh, item, hit Superstore. And essentially, this is a standard sort of prep flow. I'm just going to put this up to sort of fill the screen. And I'm going to click on this final output here on the very end. And the key thing here, we just need to change this output from writing a file to writing to the database. So you can see that's the option over here. And so it's over here on the left hand side. So I'm going to select that 
database table and I'm going to select Postgres SQL and uh, the thing to type here is localhost if you're running Postgres on your computer localhost basically means this machine uh, the name of the database is surprise surprise Postgres with one S the username is also Postgres with one S and my password I'll just enter that in here now and hit sign in and if everything works properly you should just be able to log in that sort of uh, initial sort of change on the screen was Tableau basically running off a query to the database to make sure that everything is there and so now we can select a table to write to I'll just call this new table it won't find the new table and so in this case I'll just uh, hit create new table um, and then every time you run the flow you can give it an option in this case it's just going to keep appending information to the bottom of the table right so I'm just going to hit replace data okay because if there's no data in the database and it's obviously going to put the data there but if you run this flow again you don't want to keep uh, writing more rows what you actually want to do is expunge the data so go ahead and hit run flow and now this should um, successfully complete uh, that's all done and now if I switch over to my Postgres uh, uh, view and just hit refresh reload the website that's absolutely fine then uh, this little hierarchy on the left hand side will change to reflect that I've got a, a new database so let's just uh, open up this hierarchy and you can see that my tables and now have this new table option just over here on the left hand side and I've got even the new columns that we just saw here in Tableau Prep running and working nicely. So that's pretty much it. That's how to install Postgres SQL on your Mac. Now, earlier on, I did say I'd show you how to uninstall this. Um, if you close all the windows, let's say you want to get rid of this, you don't want it on your machine anymore, you just need to go to your root directory. So the root directory is basically the hard drive. Uh, in this case, it's Macintosh HD. If you've got a Mac and you've never ever sort of uh, formatted it or changed anything default about it it should always be called Macintosh HD and this is just basically the hard drive then you want to head to library and once you're in the library you're looking for the folder called Postgres and in there you'll have the version of Postgres and if you go into that folder you'll see here that this is the uninstaller and when you double click this uninstaller what it will actually do is again ask you for username and password and then at the very, very end of this, it will ask you what you'd like to remove. And you can either remove everything or just specific components that you've actually installed. So here, if I take the individual components, it will then ask me, well, which component would you like to remove? Uh, and then from there on, once you've done that, it basically go ahead, it goes ahead and correctly deletes the files off your Mac and make sure that it doesn't have any remnant information like an old database an old password and maybe even things like the configuration and just make sure you've got a clean start when it comes to Postgres. That's it for the video. I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, if you like the video, hit subscribe. If you don't like the video, let me know what you'd like to see more of uh, in the comments below. And I've really enjoyed getting questions from uh, the audience. So if you've got any questions on this particular video, by all means, ask away in the comments. And I try and do my best to go through every comment. I read every single one of them. I don't necessarily have time to respond to all of them, but I do read every single comment. So leave them and I'll try and get to them as soon as I can. All right. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.